This video is all about measuring and topping up both the engine oil and the transmission oil on one of these R230s. This is an SL55 AMG. The transmissions or gearboxes in these cars are supposed to be sealed for life, but in reality, after anywhere between 50 to 75,000 miles, you should probably change the gearbox oil on your car and we're going to do that in another video on this car and when you take it out you'll notice that it's no longer that bright red color but in worst case scenario it's brown or black if your oil is burnt or really old. Now I'm going to show you the easy method of topping up and checking your transmission oil using a dipstick. I'm also going to show you the two methods to check the level of your engine oil. Now the electronic mesh method which you do via the dashboard is not particularly accurate so I'm also going to show you a method using a special graduated dipstick and then at the end of the video I'm going to show you what oil we used and where we got it from and where we got the various dipsticks. In the case of the R230 it's very important to realize that the standard R230 takes less oil than the AMG, the SL55 AMG version. Across situations where people are showing how to change the oil on an SL55 without realizing that there are two oil drain plugs on this car and two oil pans and they've actually only changed the oil in the front oil pan and not the rear now, one. Depending on your driving style you will use engine oil and it's important to check the oil levels from time to time. I happen to know that this particular car um, needs to be topped up so I'm just going to show you what the level of the oil is on the dipstick before I top it up then I'm going to show you on the dash what it's telling me I need to top it up by and then we'll top it up by that amount and then we'll look at the dipstick again and to see where it is. It goes without saying that before you check the oil on any car your car must be on level ground otherwise you won't get an accurate reading. It's cold and we're going to check the oil level using a dipstick. The dipstick in that you put the millimeter graduated side facing the windscreen because if you do it the other way around you'll find that when you take the dipstick out you'll get oil smeared everywhere and you won't get an accurate reading. Now the dipstick is not going to go in all the way it goes in about this far here. How do you know that we need to add about a litre of oil to this car? So let's see what the dipstick reads. There we go, that's reading about 85 millimetres on that dipstick. Putting the graduated side in towards the windscreen is if you look at the other side of the dipstick, you often, when you're drawing the dipstick, will get oil smeared all the way up there as you were drawing it, and then you'll get an inaccurate reading on the dipstick. So on this side of the dipstick here, the oil is about up to here, a centimetre higher than on the graduated Fire side. Fire this car up and see what the dashboard tells us we need to add. Now it's important that when you read the oil via the dashboard you wait a certain amount of time for the oil to actually get into the oil pan. If you try and read the oil just after you've turned the engine off you'll get an error message on the dash. Inside the car with the key in the ignition but the engine not turned on like so. You want to hit this down button here once And you'll see engine oil level measuring now and on this side here we go it's telling us we need to add 1.01 litre to reach the maximum engine oil level now this car takes i believe it's nine litres or nine quarts of oil so although we're a litre short there was a huge amount of oil in this car and it's not throwing up any warning lights to us engine oil for this car is mobile one zero w40 you put about a litre of oil in here this oil cap just turns anti-clockwise probably take this plastic casing off to avoid getting oil over the car but i'm just going to use a couple of tissues and rags to make sure that we don't get any oil dripping on the car just going to wait for that oil to settle in the pan and then we're going to check it on the dipstick and also on the dash of the car the salutary lesson if you happen to own one of these cars um, I knew that we needed to add some engine oil to this car because I tested it on the dash a little while ago because this car developed a bit of an oil leak in the last few months and I assumed it was just a drip from the engine or perhaps the rear main seal. Now, the other day something very strange happened in this car. I was on the motorway, I went to overtake somebody and I put my foot on the accelerator and the engine revved but the car didn't change into gear. And prior to that, I had noticed, or I thought I'd noticed, that the gear changing when the car was cold was kind of a little bit slow and laggy. 
I didn't think too much about it until I got the um, transmission pan oil dipstick. Now when I tested the transmission pan oil, it's very, very low when the engine is hot. And that laggy gear changing and the engine revving when you put your foot on the accelerator and not going into gear, the only other time I've experienced that is in our pagoda when we were low on gearbox oil or transmission oil. And I think that's what the problem with this car is. I think that the oil leak isn't engine oil at all, despite the fact that it's brown and it looks like engine oil. I think it's the transmission oil that's leaking. So in a separate video, we are going to jack this car up, take that transmission pan off, change the gasket, change the oil, perhaps change the plate, change all the bolts, etc. We won't do that in this video. But if you have got an oil leak on your car, do make sure that you check the transmission oil on a dipstick just to make sure that it's not that that's leaking because you may find yourself stranded one day in second or third gear and unable to change. Back in the car, we just did the key and the ignition, all the lights on, the down arrow, and there we go. Engine oil level, okay. So we've added one litre and now we're getting what we should be getting, which is the engine oil level, okay. Just check on the oil dipstick where we're at after putting a litre of oil in. There we go, we're at about the 115 level on the dipstick. Yes. Again, if you turn that over, it's giving you an extra centimetre of oil. So about 115 on this dipstick here is a full tank of oil when it comes to topping up your transmission fluid or refilling it after you've changed the transmission pan gasket there's two ways of doing it there's the difficult way and the easy way the difficult way i think is to fill it from underneath with a pressurized system um, and the easy way is to fill it from the top using the um, dipstick filler hole which is just behind there now these cars do not come with a dipstick. That there is the uh, transmission oil um, filler just there. And these um, caps have a, ta a, ca a plastic tab in there and you have to break that plastic tab off before you can get the cap off. So we're gonna start off doing that. Sometimes you can just break this off with your nail like so and that'll fall underneath. Now this is the cap here. You can see AMB workshop dealership only. They don't want you to be changing the transmission oil or even touching the transmission oil. The way I got this off was just to use a small screwdriver to push that bit there down. Like I don't know so. how well you can see this, but this little catch here is what stops that cap coming off. And it's not until you push this all the way out that catch can go moved back. Now it's really important when you take the cap off that you make sure you get the o-ring out as well. You can see that that o-ring is still left in there so we're just very carefully gonna fish that out. It's the o-ring there and when you put the cap on just remember to slip that o-ring back over like so. To get this cap back on you're gonna have to push this all the way out with a little watchmaker screwdriver like so. And then when you push the cap back on, you're going to click that back in or put the new one in if you've got one. Fill that go on with a, uh, your hair clicking into place if you've got it on right. And then hopefully, without dropping it, you just need to slide this bit back in. So you slid that back, back in and you just push it down, it will click into place. And then that's that locked on. Got to fill it via the dipstick hole. Um, you need to do it carefully so as not to pour transmission oil all over the engine and all over your garage floor. And this is the way that we're going to do it. To John Lewis and bought ourselves an OXO brand turkey baster. Now, that's probably the most expensive turkey baster I've ever bought, but it's um, graduated in millilitres, which is what we want. The top comes off, which is what we want, and it's got a nice angled spout which is also this what we turkey want. baster fits in that hole there perfectly and not just that you can then put a funnel on top like so 
and pour your transmission fluid in. Now, make sure that when you use a funnel that you either put a paper clip or something in there so that there's an air vent or you use a vented funnel, which is what that groove there is. Otherwise, what you'll find happens is you pull your trans pour your transmission fluid in, you'll get a massive air bubble coming up and either get transmission fluid all over the car or worse still, just end up with an airlock and nothing will happen. When you come to top up your transmission fluid or refill it after changing the transmission pan gasket you're going to need to know uh, how much oil to put in now one way of doing it if you're changing the gasket and you're taking all the oil out you can collect the oil and put in the same quantity but that won't give you exactly the right quantity but it'll give you something pretty close um, if you're refilling the oil from underneath the car through the overflow tube then you basically just refill it until it comes out again we're not going to get involved in any of that what we're going to do is use this cheap and cheerful dipstick here which you can get from amazon or ebay for just a few pounds good eyesight can see that this dipstick has two measures on it the measure closest to the end says 25 degrees and the measure at the top there closest to the silver wire says 80 degrees so that is the temperature of the oil when it's hot and when it's basically at room temperature and what you need to do is use your car software either the iCarSoft or we're going to be using an Autel device to get the oil to that temperature before you measure use one of these dipsticks to measure your oil and it's a freezing cold day like it is today you will find that the level of the oil is actually below the 25 degree mark and that makes sense because as the oil warms up it moves up this dipstick towards the 80 degree so mark if that's not reading 25 degrees you're not going to get an accurate uh, transmission oil reading you need to run the car and then you need to connect um, a scanner to the OBD port and measure the temperature wait till the scanner tells it that the temperature of the transmission oil is at 25 degrees before you use the dipstick and similarly um, if you're trying to measure the upper limit, make sure that the temperature is at 80 degrees before you use the dipstick. This video here, just with links to where we got the various dipsticks and oil. We got the engine oil dipstick for £6.38 on eBay from Mark Sport 2015. We got our transmission oil gear stick from eBay, £7.10. It's actually slightly cheaper when we bought ours, about £5 on it is the out of stock now. From these guys here, can't pronounce it, Yek G Fly. We got our engine oil from Halfords, 0W40, just £11.49, a bargain. Using the Febby recommended automatic transmission fluid and um, when we do the gasket change, the cheapest place I found to buy that, we bought six litres, um, Sussex Auto, they sold, sell it at 11.50 a litre. As I say, we bought six litres and it arrived the next day. So super fast delivery and a good price as well. We've got our turkey baster from John Lewis, but you can get them online as well for about the same price, £15.29 on eBay.